<laughs> You're listening to BBC Radio 4. Now let's come to <laughs> Bilal. Let's come to Bilal uh, Zafar, who's only started performing as a stand-up comedian in uh, 2013, but has already attracted critical praise, prizes, enthusiastic audiences, as well as creating something of a Twitter storm by pretending to be running a Muslim-only cake shop in Bristol, uh, the subject of his uh, current show. But this was... Uh, I, I haven't seen your show. I know you, you sort of... You start doing it, but it was your brother's fault. Yeah, uh, I mean, I shouldn't. I, I didn't just do it out of nowhere. It was yeah. a little while ago on Twitter, a bit of a horrible campaign started. Uh, it was boycott Muslim businesses. That began to trend on Twitter. Now, my surname is Zafar. My name on Twitter, my handle has always been Zafar Cakes. Yeah. Right. Well, we're just enjoying yes. that. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that, 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 that's funny enough. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. my brother saw, he's, he has a Twitter account, he saw that that boycott Muslim businesses thing was trending and he thought he'd have a little joke at my expense. Mm -hmm. And he tweeted, just to make me laugh, I think, he tweeted, boycott Zaffa Cakes, a cake shop in Bristol that refuses to serve non-Muslims, yeah. <laughs> with the hashtag. Yes. Which got quite a bit of attention straight away, mm -hmm. which was funny, and I just played along with it, basically. Yeah. People got even angrier. And it just got bigger and bigger and funnier. <laughs> so people were genuinely angry with the concept that yes. you would dare to have a shop in, in Bristol, if that's relevant, mm -hmm. that would only serve uh, Muslims. Uh, so you... Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, that was it. And the thing is, it doesn't even make sense as a concept. It, the whole thing, <laughs> yeah. none of it made sense, which is what made it quite funny as yeah. well. So you had people what, what tweeting, uh, we must, you know close this shop down or you, yeah, yeah all sorts of stuff so uh, i'll give you an example of one of my favorite bits something that sort of might have made it get out of control so mm. people were saying things like it's a disgrace it needs to be stopped it's broken britain all of that sort of thing mm. and then one lady said he's probably on benefits talking about me <laughs> yeah. now the whole thing the whole negative benefits thing we have in this country the, the sort of attitude towards it upset me quite a bit so i thought i thought i'll just you know i'll reply and i'll try and annoy her a bit you know mm. so i, I tweeted I am not on benefits. I used to be. I save them up. Now I have a business. Which I thought was fine, which I thought they would kind of get that it was a joke like yeah. everyone here just did yeah. and leave me alone. But then it got, that really upset people. I think yeah. that was, yeah. it was like I had just said all of the negative sort of tabloid stories they see. It's like yeah. it was all rolled into one you, tweet. You're kind of reinforcing all their prejudices. Exactly, so. yeah. Um, I don't want to take you too far into your show because otherwise people mm -hmm. will, um, you know, there'll be nothing to see. But exactly. originally your picture on Twitter was of you being a stand-up, but you changed that as well. Yeah, well, okay. So just by coincidence, where, so I was living in Manchester. I had a day job and stuff at the time. And I was in this little cafe after work and I was about to eat this little chop gingerbread man mm. <laughs> when it all started yeah. uh, looking at my phone on Twitter and I just took a picture of it and I made it my profile picture this mm -hmm. little which I like at the time I didn't realize this again it was just to make my brother laugh the gingerbread man because it was a chocolate gingerbread man that might have looked like a little Muslim man <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to these people yeah. <laughs> that were quite angry at me. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's clearly a gingerbread man though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. maybe it was meant to be a little yeah. Muslim gingerbread man yeah. in their minds. I, I just like chocolate, yeah. you know? But, yeah, um, so that's yeah. basically what the show is. Uh, <laughs> so, and you've got a lot of stuff to draw on, lots of uh, tweets and yeah. remarks about bacon and this and that. So so it's, it's, a, it's a funny show. And I, one of them, you, you, you started looking at what his... One of the more aggressive, I think he's called St George, who's a bit of a clue George. Says, uh, <laughs> about what, what he liked in life. So I had a look at one of the guy's uh, little bios on Twitter, you know, sort of one of the main guys that was spreading the hate around. And I saw that his favourite football team, which he was a season ticket holder of, was Manchester City. Yeah. And he'd been saying all these things like avoid mini cabs in case the driver's Muslim, that sort of thing, don't give him a penny. Yeah. While every year he's giving literally hundreds of pounds to Man City Football Club, which is owned by a man called Sheikh Mansour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he might not realise he's Muslim. I mean, to be fair, he might I not mean, know that Sheikh pretty, Mansour. He's giving a lot of money to probably the biggest Muslim business in the country. <laughs> yeah. I just found yeah. it, yeah, it, the whole thing was fascinating. Uh, all right, well, yeah, it's, a, it's a funny show and it's a, obviously a funny idea and you're perhaps drawing on, uh, the, you know, as I was saying before, Mark's, I, you know, idea of you know real life becoming a you know part of your stand up act mm -hmm. but of course there is a serious side to this in that uh, um you know when you know ken was saying well you didn't feel that at home in america do you feel uh, at home normally do you feel at home in britain it's yeah it's strange because so for me i was born in east london i have parents are from pakistan but i've i've barely even left britain that much i'm very british i think you mm. know so it is quite strange when you hear these views it's quite confusing uh, and that's why I think it makes me laugh so much when I hear yeah. negative stuff like that. 
Well, some um, people will laugh, but some other people won't yeah. laugh. They'll be, um, you know, really sad, you know, uh, about this sort of thing. But was this a new experience for you? Or well, not really. I've kind of grown up. I mean, I'm from, like, I'm from a council estate in East London, which is uh, not very multicultural. When I was little, anyway, it's quite different now. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a new thing, certainly. Mm. It's, I've, I've experienced quite a lot of horrible stuff throughout my life. Uh, you know, a lot of people have. Um, so it's kind of, so I guess the whole sort of Islamophobia thing was quite... I think that's why it's quite easy to write about for me. Yes. Um, but yeah, once you're sort of used to something, you can sort of focus on on the funnier sides of it. Mm. Um, I'm not too depressed. I think there's enough mm. sort of good people overall, if you no, know what I mean. I've seen this show that we're, we're talking about. I yeah. haven't seen you doing uh, other stuff. I think you, mm -hmm. you'd already won a, a, a prize at the Hackney Empire before yeah. doing this. So once this show is over, once mm -hmm. you've, you've toured it around the country and everything, uh, uh, have, are you trying to start another incident uh, somewhere to well, create another show? Well, I have... I'll be starting my next Edinburgh show, hopefully, which I'll be doing again next year in Edinburgh. And um, it's going to be about, I know what it's going to be about. It's an exclusive for Radio Voice. Oh, good, yes. It's going to be about, be about the world of uh, sort of online dating. Oh, right. Uh, but we'll be sort of satirical as well. That's all I'm saying now. But all I'll right. be doing previews of that around London, around the country. So if people are interested, they can come along and see how that sort of develops. What, you're extending the plugging aspect of your appearance here <laughs> extensively, because all, all I'm going to tell them, Bilal is, is touring with Cakes until Saturday the 4th of June, and you've got a website and everything, you oh, can yeah. go on. Not to be trusted, necessarily, because there'll be all sorts of lies about <laughs> cake shops that you run. Um, I, I think, actually, you should take a leaf out of Ken's book, and you should actually launch Zaffa Cakes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know if I have the time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 there were free cakes at the, uh, the show that I saw. Yeah. So well, it, though yeah. not all the way back. I mean, the first Where couple of rows sitting? got. I was sitting the next row behind the free cake. So I'm not. Should I'm not complaining. Earlier, but yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, well, it was just a thing in Edinburgh. I thought you're doing a show called Cakes. Might as well do free cakes. So I did the first few rows just so people would sit at the front because I didn't know how busy it'd be. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, it was quite popular. It's another high risk strategy. <laughs> 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 if it's not going well the first five minutes. In some clubs, you'd have got all the cakes uh, back at you. But I suppose we're all too greedy these days. That, uh, anyway, that's it. I'm afraid that's all the loose ends tied up. If you've just missed the programme, or if you want to listen again, it's available on the iPlayer, and then there's our podcast available via the BBC Radio 4 website. But in any format, in any event, my thanks to all my guests, Bilal Zafar, Ken Hom and Mark Thomas, Loyal Karner and Samfa, Scotty and Vicky McClure. Next week, my guests will include Rufus Hound and Frank Gardner. Until then, from me, for now, goodbye. <laughs>